I believe it's finally Friday. Oof. So, um, we're still um, we're learning so much about derivatives. 4.3 this is a great section. Um, so, yesterday we learned a ton of stuff. Um, like the first derivative test, for example, was one of the important things we learned. Um, let me remind you what it said. <clears throat> it said that if we have a function, a differentiable function, on an interval, and C is a critical point, uh, which since it's differentiable, that's gonna mean, it would mean either that it's not differentiable there, uh, or that the derivative is zero, but it's differentiable, so the derivative must be zero. Um, then what happens is that if f primes goes from uh, positive to negative at c, uh, this means that f goes from increasing to decreasing, uh, which means that um, f is a, a relative maximum at c. Meanwhile, if the opposite happens, um, if f prime goes from negative to positive, then f is gonna have a relative minimum because the function goes from decreasing to increasing. And I can draw a picture of that. And if f prime doesn't change signs at c, then f has neither a relative maximum or minimum. So that was um, that was the first derivative test that we saw yesterday. Then we moved on to talking about curvature. Um, and we said that a function is uh, what? A function is concave up. So concave up is trying to express the idea of a function curving upwards, um, a function turning left as we, as we move. Well, for you it's this way. If it is above its tangent lines, Um, so, for example, anything that's kind of curving curving up, it could be decreasing and still be curving up. I think I don't know how to draw four different ones. They just I have three pictures. Well, that doesn't make sense at all. Also. So, if I draw the tangents, you can see that the the graph is always sitting on top of them and not underneath. <clears throat> and that's what we said yesterday. And today, uh, we're gonna see what that has to do with the second derivative, which well, some of you were already aware of yesterday, it seems. Uh, but those of you didn't come to class today, so. Um, so what happens in the relation between uh, convexity and the second derivative? So you might guess, based on the theme that we're following lately, uh, what's gonna happen. So what happens if, if a function 
pass positive second derivative on an interval. Well, so what's the second derivative? It's the derivative of the derivative. Um, so, um, this means that that f prime is increasing um so this means so what is f prime f prime at every point is the slope of the tangent line so how can we uh so f um write that down f prime is the slope of the tangent line so um and it's increasing and what do increasing slopes look like um Well, um, either you start with very small slope and then they get steeper. Um, or maybe you start with big negative slopes and then they get less steep. That's still a larger number. Um, or maybe they go from negative to positive. That could happen, I guess, too. So um, probably a good thing. It's always a better thing to draw up things for yourself and to watch me draw it, but what can we do? So um, how does a function that has first this slope, then this slope, then this slope look like? Well. Uh, it looks like this. It looks, it looks like it's curving up. Uh, if they go down a lot and then not that much down, it looks again. It looks like it's curving up. Oh, this is not what I meant to draw. Um, if there's steep and then zero and then steep going up, then the function is gonna look like this. Um, One, two, three, four. And here I have the same tangent lines on the on the graph. So in conclusion, what did we just see? What we just saw is that if the second derivative is positive, the function is concave up. So um, I'm not gonna talk about third derivatives. I have no idea how to draw third derivatives. Um, I feel like you show me pictures and I have no idea from a picture if the third derivative is positive or negative. But so we have three different things that we know very clearly about a function. If I look at a function, I can tell if it's uh, positive or negative, just looking to see whether it's above or below the axis. I can see where it's positive and negative. I can see where it's increasing and decreasing, just seeing where it points. And I can also see if it's concave up or down by seeing how it curves. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is that any combination of these is, is possible. A function could be positive and decreasing, could be positive, and then it could be concave up or down, all the same combinations, and they could all happen. Uh, so it's not like you see a positive function and then it has to be increasing. 
let me just I should write if if it's negative, it's concave down. Are there any questions? Maybe they stop seeing me. Oh, I, I keep seeing me. That's good. <clears throat> oh, no. oh no, whatever. All right. Um so he has no questions. <clears throat> Many people have been in this Zoom meeting since yesterday and they've been sleeping the whole time. So uh, the second derivative can also help us um, tell uh, max from a min, which is fantastic. Um, look at a relative maximum point. It looks like this. It looks like this. So what happens to the curvature at a relative max and a relative min? What do you mean? I mean the concavity. I mean, is it concave up or down, or does it depend? If you have a relative max, the function is concave down, right? And if you have a relative mean, the the function is concave up. Thank you very much, Matthew. And if you think of the first derivative test, for example, if you concave up, your derivative has to be going from negative to positive. And if you go from negative to positive, you you gotta be increasing to do that. And if you're so f prime goes from negative to positive, this means that f is increasing. And f prime f prime is increasing. F prime is, is the function that's going from negative to positive. Um, and if a function is increasing and it has a derivative, um, then it's going to be zero. It's going to be positive. So um, this is the second derivative test, which is really great because it's really easy to use. So. Um, well, let me just repeat it. The test says if you have a critical point. Oh, no. Oh, no, the circle of death. Oh, this is going to be bad. 
Oh no, why did I think my computer could handle changing the the length of a of a square? Yes. Okay, um in the handwriting. Um so if a function Oh, oh, oh wow, came back. Oh, came back and now the test manager is opening. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, nothing else to work. Right. If f is twice differentiable on an interval, so of course, if there's no two derivatives to take, uh, nothing to say here. And f has a critical point at c, then, uh, then the following happens. If the second derivative is negative, then so remember which is which. Um, I think what you gotta do is draw a picture when you don't remember. Then um, f has a relative maximum at c. If the derivative is positive, then f has a relative minimum at c. And if the derivative If the second derivative is zero, then I have absolutely no clue. Uh, so don't think that, so this doesn't look like the first derivative test in that the second derivative could be zero and anything could happen. Um, me, and I can show you a silly example. Um, so let me show you a silly example. So look at um, look at the function x squared. So what do we know about the function x squared? Um, I know I know the derivative. So the derivative is two x. The derivative of zero is zero. So um, this is zero is a critical point. And the second derivative of the function to the derivative of the function two x um, is not what I wrote, it's two. So the second derivative of zero is positive. And this makes it a relative minimum. Now uh, well, like you see in the picture. But now what if I take, instead of x squared, what if I take x cubed? Well, you know what x cubed looks like. It doesn't have a min or a max. <clears throat> so in this case, the derivative is zero. The second derivative is six x. So it's again zero, uh, and there's no max or min. For example, because of the because of the um, first derivative test, which does actually tell me that there's no max or min, uh, because the derivative doesn't change signs; it stays positive. Um, so the function goes from increasing 
before zero to still increasing after zero. So, um, so that's an example where you have the second derivative equal to zero and, and there's no max or min, but if I take x to the fourth, this one clearly has a minimum. And again, the second derivative test is inconclusive. So there's a critical point at zero. If I take the second derivative, um, the second derivative is zero, but this is still a minimum. Again, this, the first derivative taste, uh, test knows the answer. Um, if we plot the derivative for x cubed, uh, it goes from negative to positive. So this function goes from decreasing to increasing. So keep in mind, if you if you do the second derivative test and you get a zero, you don't know anything, which is not the same as knowing that there's no max or min. <clears throat> but anyway, if you look at the first derivative test and the second derivative test side by side, um, I think the second derivative test is better because it's way easier to use. You just you just need to take a derivative, which tends to be easy, and and plug it in and see if you got a positive or negative number. And if it works, then then it's great. The first derivative test is more complicated to use because you have to think of whether a function changes signs, and that means looking at more than one value. Um, that's just it's more complicated. Remember the table of positive and negative signs that I drew, I drew yesterday. But on the plus side, the, the thing the first derivative test has going for it is that it, it can work when the second derivative test doesn't. Um, okay. Are there any questions? <clears throat> so let's do an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so um, let's look at the second derivative of this function and see what we can learn. Let's find um, the local maxes and mins and where is concave up and down. So um, how do we find the local maxes and mins? Where do we start? First, you need to find the first and second derivative. Uh, eventually, I'm going to find it. Thank you, Simi. Eventually, I'm going to find the second derivative. But to find the, the critical points, I only need the first derivative. I only need to find um, to set f prime equal to zero. So the first derivative is four x cubed minus twelve x squared. Uh, which has an extra four in there that I don't really care for. Uh, so what are the solutions? What are the solutions to this equation? What is a solution to this equation? Or are there no solutions to this equation? Zero. Thank you, Sam. 
Hey, there's x's everywhere. Um, so x equals zero is the solution. Um, so I can pull out x as a common factor, but if I look closer, I can pull out x squared. So I can write it as um, if I take the common factor x squared, now I can think of another solution. Uh, x equals three. X equals three, thank you, Pascal. And that's it because um, if the product of four x and x minus three is zero, that means one of them has to be zero. So x is gonna have to be either zero or three. So um, I don't know if they're maxes or mints or neither, but what I can do is um, use a second derivative test. <clears throat> So uh, for that, I, I got to compute the second derivative, which is the derivative of 4x cubed minus 12x squared, which is the first derivative. And that is going to be 12x squared minus 24x. And this is 12x times x minus 2. So the second derivative at 0 is um, 0. And the second derivative at 3 is uh, 36, which is positive. So the second derivative test, um, with no more work than this, um, really not a lot of work, uh, taking two derivatives and plugging in one number, uh, tells me that this is a local minimum. And for zero, he has no idea. <clears throat> but we can still we can still use the first derivative test. Um, Yeah. So um, the first derivative test tells us to look at where uh, if the if the derivative is positive or negative. The derivative being for x squared x minus three. So um, is f prime positive or negative? To the to the left of zero and to the right. <clears throat> so you take that prime effect and you plug in uh, a number that's close to zero. Um, do you get a positive number or a negative number? How well, far is positive? I don't know about x squared. I don't know about x minus 3. Is you do the table thing, but that seems too much work.
It's not positive until x is bigger than three. Yeah, um, exactly. So um, in both cases, x squared is always positive or zero. Uh, four is positive, and if x is close to zero, for example, if x is smaller than three, x minus three is negative. So four x squared times x minus three is is not positive around x. So the first iterative test says that this function goes from decreasing to still decreasing. I don't know. And this means that x is not a max or min. So, so far we have a minimum, no, a minimum? Yes, we have a minimum at three and nothing at zero. And let's look at the, at the curvature, the concavity. As a curvality as well. So to do this, we need to see the sign of the second derivative. If if it's positive, it will be curving up. If it's negative, it will, it will be curving down. So the second derivative was um, twelve x times x minus two. So. I guess here I can do the, the whole thing where I have x smaller than zero, x bigger than two, and I can look at the signs of everything. So um, if x is smaller, so x changes signs at zero, from negative to positive, and x minus two changes signs at changes signs at two from negative to positive. So multiplying them together, well, this is a parabola. Uh, this is negative, positive, negative, positive. So um, I now know a whole bunch of things. I can I can really I can draw it. Do a really good sketch of this function now. Ooh, the news. <clears throat> so, um, so, um, what did I, what do I know so far? Um, X has. Uh, critical points at zero, uh, well, x, f, f has a local minimum at three on between negative infinity and zero. The second derivative is positive between zero and two. The second derivative is negative and between two and infinity. The second derivative is positive. Uh, so I can do a pretty good picture with this. Um, let's say, let's find f of zero and f prime of zero and f of three and f of two. So I know where to plot them. So remember the function was um, x to the fourth minus four x cubed. So at zero is zero. At two, it's 16 minus uh, 32, which is negative 16. And at three, it's 81 minus 81. No, what? 27 times four, I have no idea. <clears throat> 27, I'm name. So um, 10, 15, 
普通に、ネガティブ16、ネガティブ27。So, what do I know? I know here there's no local min at all. I know it goes from decreasing to decreasing.、Um, and also, so, here I have positive second derivative. I, I should be drawing something that curves up. Here, I know the tangent is horizontal at zero. And here, it's curving down up, into, up until I reach、um, x equals two. And probably, that's probably too much. And then it starts curving up again. And here I know I'm supposed to have a local,、um, local min. And that's it. I think I drew a really good picture.、Uh, let's see if I'm correct. I mean, it's going to look off because of the scale. Uh, but other than that, I did an amazing job. Good job myself.、Uh, so if I zoom in on the x axis, it'll look a lot more like what I do. Wow, look at that. And by look at that, I mean. Oh, oh, it is there. Okay. Why is, it, why is, why is my phone zoom in? <clears throat> so,、um, let me show in this, in this drawing all the things I explained.、Um, so, here, up to here, The second derivative was positive. So f was curving up. And you can see that it is curving up.、Um, in the second segment, up until two, here is the chunk where the second derivative was negative. So f is curving down. And starting at two, so something special happens at two,、uh, the second derivative becomes positive again. And the function goes back to curving up. It looks like a smile.、Um, so here we have second derivative equal to zero. The, sec the、um, This was a critical point, which was not a max or a min. And x equals three.、Um, so here we had f prime equals zero, which would make the tangents horizontal, just like at zero. And, and it's a local min because. The function is concave up. And, and if you know all these things,、um, you can really do a good picture of a function. And that's probably a sign that you understand calculus really well if you can draw、uh, good pictures, honestly,、um, even, even though computers can draw them for us. The point is understanding the pictures. Are there any questions? So, the critical points are points of inflection.、Uh, well, I'm about to tell you what a point of inflection is. So, let me just tell you a point of inflection is a place where the function changes curvature. So, it goes from going concave up to concave down or the other way around. So,、um, 
here, this is a critical point. This is the point of inflection. So here, F goes from concave up to concave down. Uh, this is a point of inflection. If you look at this critical point, um, here F is just concave up. So this is not a point of inflection. And here, this is not a critical point, but also F goes from, well, it goes in the other, in the other direction, I guess. Um, F goes from curving down to curving up. So this is another inflection point. So what, so um, there's this special points which are pretty useful for drawing a function, um, which are the points where the, the function changes curvature. And sometimes they're critical points, sometimes they're not. And sometimes critical points are points of inflection and sometimes they're not. Basically they're points of inflection when they, when they are not maxes or mins. So when you have a critical point, your options are, if the function is, differentiable that it's a max or a min or a point of inflection. And if the function is twice differentiable. If the derivative is not very strange. Um, so let me write that down in the notes. Um, So, um, one point where F is continuous and well, so a point where the function changes curvature is called the point of inflection. F goes from concave down to up. Or from up to down, we call them the same way. Up, what the hell? Two down. It's called an inflection point. And also, if you're a person on TV, then you just call anything you feel in the world like a point of inflection. You just every every five minutes on the TV, you say this has reached the point of inflection. That doesn't then it doesn't matter what things mean, right? You can also, you will also say if you work for TV that everything grows exponentially. <clears throat> so, um, that's not English. So what an inflection point is a point that um, looks, like this. So here a function is curving up and down, or like this, or like this, or like that. So in all of those, um, so the function is, a, is on both sides of the tangent, which doesn't happen very often. And you can see that First, the function is about is on one side of the tangent, and afterwards is in the other. So here it goes from 
above the tangent to below it. Here it goes to below the tangent to above it. Here it goes from below to above. Here it goes from above to below. <sighs> and these are useful for drawing functions. All right, so um, let's do another example. Let's sketch um, e to the one over x. So e to the one over x is a function that has um, some interesting things. So where, where is this function continuous? Oh, I'm not going to finish this, am I? Oh, I should say, um, if f has um, two derivatives um, then f prime changes signs so it's probably going to be zero uh, it's, it's going to be zero Okay, um, so this function is not continuous at x equals zero. I can't put x equals zero in that denominator. So I should probably compute the limits. The limit as x approaches zero from the right. Uh, well, the limit as x approaches zero from the right of one over x is positive infinity. If you divide one by a very small positive number, you get a very large number. And the exponential of a very large number is very large. The limit from the other side is not infinity um, because the limit as x approaches zero from the left of one over x is negative infinity. And you take the exponential of, uh, oh, see me answer. It continues at one, it continues at one and also everywhere else other than zero. Um, you take the exponential of something very large and negative, it, it approaches zero. So well, let's just cheat. So from the right, it approaches infinity. From the left, it approaches zero. Uh, and then you can see, you can also see that there's horizontal asymptotes. Um, the scale wasn't like messed up. There you go. As, as x approaches infinity, the function approaches e to the zero. So uh, what I would like to look at is where is this point? Um, where is the inflection point? So to find the inflection point, we're gonna take the derivative. Uh, we're gonna take the second derivative and, and see where it's zero. Oh, if, if everything hadn't frozen, uh, of course, but uh, everything has frozen. So not gonna find an, any infection points now. Um, okay, well, um, what I was gonna do is gonna take the derivative of e to the one over x. So that's a composition of exponential and then the well, first one over x, then you do exponential. I was gonna use the chain rule. I was gonna get 
e to the 1 over x times negative 1 over x squared. And then that was going to be, I was going to have to take a second derivative. And that was, I was going to use the product rule. And then I was going to have an equation whose solution was going to be 1 half, negative 1 half. The inflection point there is negative 1 half. But um, as Chrome freezes yet again, uh, we're reaching the end of the class and the week. So I'm going to go set you free so you can go about your weekend business or your, I guess, probably is probably not the last class of your day. Although if it is, congratulations, you're now in the weekend. And oof, control the lead. I can't even stop the recording, can I? Well, at some point I'll stop the recording. See you next week. Sam, you here for me, or is your computer also crashed? All right, Sam, I'm going to guess you're not there.